Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 14th April 2018. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the site superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at the technical charts of two commodities, oil and gold. They tend to impact related stocks. We will see first hand example of that when we study oil and energy industries. When the market goes up, it tends to bring many stocks along with it that is why we study the market not only in terms of technicals but also using market breadth or market internals of nasdaq and nyse and we look at the technical charts as well of the four broad market etfs along with market if we align our trades with the industry's direction those trades tend to be more robust we study the industry strength and weakness using industry scorecard and heat map. We will carry out the same exercise today. Looking back on some stocks that we selected earlier, we'll see that when we align all the forces with our trades, they tend to do better than just looking at technical charts. We'll see that from real estate stocks, that we selected earlier. Though the real estate sector declined, our selected stocks using 360 degrees analysis continue to do well. Along the way, we may go through some of the trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. In the past two weeks, it was difficult to look for optimal trades. The same is more or less true this week as well. Instead of having many optimal trade opportunities, we are seeing more reasons for caution in some of the industries. There are probably some trade opportunities as well. We'll try to find some of them. That was the last slide of the presentation. We'll now use the live system. We begin our commodities analysis using oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this template at a glance template because it allows us to decide if there is a low risk entry point at the right edge of the chart in a few seconds. Last week oil had dropped and it came precisely to the memory support line. As we keep on seeing again and again, when an instrument comes to memory support, there is higher likelihood that it will go up from there. In the last week's market roundup, I had mentioned that price was at this point in the daily chart. There was no short trade opportunity because price was near memory support in both daily and weekly. There was no swing long trade setup as well because the Friday's candle color and shape both were bearish. However, in the last market roundup, I had mentioned looking at the memory supports in both daily and weekly that the likely move from here would be upward. That could be used by day traders to take trades only in the long direction. 
either using the oil ETF USO or using oil futures if somebody is trading futures. That analysis was accurate this week oil continued to go up. It went up for all the five days of the week. At the right edge, it is already above upper boundary, so we are not going to take any long trade in oil right now. If oil comes down little bit and then goes up, it may give us a go with flow, long trade opportunity with low risk. Right now, there is no swing trade opportunity in oil. We are now looking at gold using the same at a glance template. Last week's candle was very indecisive in shape. Price ended on this yellow candle. This week price tried to go up on Wednesday made a very bearish shape candle with long upper tail which came very close to the watermark resistance level where bearish headwind had come earlier and there was a sharp reversal from there. In the daily chart looking from the right side we don't see any clear trend in gold right now so we'll stay away from taking any swing trade in gold. There might be some opportunities in the gold mining stocks that we identified earlier however in the gold commodity there is no low risk trade opportunity right now. From commodity study let's now move to broad market analysis. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts and along with the indices we study three internals, three pairs of internals, NASDAQ and NYSE new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. Both NASDAQ and NYSE are continuing to hold the memory support levels. Last two weeks we had very indecisive shape candles. This week both the weekly candles have hollow body that means the body is bullish however both of them also have upper tail which is somewhat bearish. The colors have changed from red to yellow that is slight increase in bullishness however the shape is indecisive. Overall looking at week to week movement we can say from the price moves that both NASDAQ and NYSE continues to be indecisive. If we look at the internals as we saw in past two weeks the new high low has little impact on the markets move right now. They were instrumental in moving price higher in earlier months but in last three weeks they are hardly going anywhere. The other four internals were whipsawing down up down move. Based on that we could expect that they would go up this week. They did go up both the advance declines and up down volumes went up but none of them went up enough to turn positive. All these four internals ended in the negative. That means the candles are showing that market went up somewhat. However, under the hood, advanced decline as well as up down volume. They are showing that more stocks declined and the decline was with higher volume. Again there is a mixed picture when we combine the candles shapes with the internals. Internals are more bearish than the candle shape. This is very confusing market and it may be better to stay away from 
trades at the moment. Some sector like energy is outperforming others and we may find trade opportunities in that sector. We will try to identify that from sector and industry analysis. Before that, let's look at the broad market ETFs. We are looking at SPY, S&P 500 ETF using at a glance template. Last two weeks had very indecisive shape candles. This week's candle shape and color are similar to that of NYSE broad index. Interestingly, I discussed in last market roundup that SPY had displayed a bullish headwind signal and it was there not only in SPY but in multiple ETFs at the same time. The same thing happened earlier when bearish headwind came at the top. Multiple ETFs displayed bearish headwind at the same time. When multiple ETFs display headwind at the same time, we may take them more seriously. I had noted the appearance of bullish headwind and of course the memory support lines were also there and mentioned last week that though many news media were very bearish, the likely move from last week's close were probably upward from this bullish headwind onward. Since then price went up, came to the value area and now on Friday it declined little bit. However, the candle color in daily is still green, bullish. There is no trade setup right now. Even if SPY tilts down on Monday or Tuesday, it is unlikely to give us a go with flow short trade setup for several reasons. One is the weekly color is not magenta and also there are multiple supports nearby. When there are multiple supports nearby, we will be careful about taking any short trade. There is no swing trade opportunity in SPY right now. Here we see that SPY tried to go up from the support lines, from the white direction line, from the memory support lines and went to value area, came very close to the declining yellow direction line. On Friday it reversed. Similar pattern is there in all the ETFs. Let's look at them. This is QQQ using at a glance template. Last two weeks had very indecisive shape candle. This week's candle shape and color are similar to that of the NASDAQ broad market index. Bullish in shape because the body is hollow but also bearish in shape because there is an upper tail. So overall the candle shape and colors are still neutral or indecisive. QQQ also displayed a bullish headwind earlier and from there price went up. Like SPY it came to value area, came to the yellow direction line and on Friday it declined. Like SPY the daily color is still green, bullish. There is no swing trade opportunity right now in QQQ. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, DIA, using at a glance template. This also had indecisive shape candles in previous two weeks. This week's candle shape is also indecisive. Color is neutral, shape is mixed. Neither bullish nor bearish. DIA also displayed a bullish headwind signal and from there it went up to value area. Daya is the only one that came not only to the yellow direction line but also to a declining memory resistance line. On Friday it declined like SPY and QQQ. If at all one is going to short any of these three ETFs then Daya looks most appropriate because there is no memory support line nearby and the white direction line is also reasonably far away. If we apply the trade setups, there is no valid short setup right now. There is no valid swing short setup right now. 
one may only use the Q fine tune charts to try to enter short with minuscule stop. SPY, QQQ and DIA all three of them came near the yellow direction line and couldn't close above it. However, IWM could do that. Let's look at IWM. IWM also displayed two very indecisive shape weekly candles. This week's candle shape is mixed. It has hollow body, long upper tail. So shape is mixed. The color has changed to bullish color, cyan. This is the only ETF of the four that we are studying that could go above the yellow direction line and closed above that. So this seems to be the strongest of the four. If we are going to take a long trade, then the long trade might be taken in IWM. So for shorts, we will choose the weakest one that is DIA and for long, we will choose the strongest one that is IWM. That is for day trading purpose. There is no swing trade setup in IWM as well. If you noticed, all these four ETFs had very little activity this week. Price went up but with very little activity. That also doesn't show the strength of the bulls. Neither does it show strength of the bears because price actually went up. So it is continuing to be indecisive. This is the same conclusion that we reached from broad market indices as well. Let's see if the same holds true from sector and industry analysis. Every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of one week prior to red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to green bar. Together they constitute 4 weeks or about 1 month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up and a bar to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. Last 3 weeks we had seen massive flip flop. All the sectors went down one week, up next week, down again the following week. Based on that, this week we would expect the sectors to go up. That happened. Not all the sectors went up but 8 of the 11 sectors went up. The defensive and higher dividend paying sectors, utilities, telecom and real estate. They retreated for the week. So utilities, telecom and real estate. The red bar came to the left of the zero point. Overall, the sectors went. Why did I say bearish? This should be bullish. Overall, the sectors' performance paints a bullish picture because eight of the sectors went up, three went down. Information technology reversed from the recent slide. However, over one month, it is still down by more than five percent. One may be cautious about any new long entry in this sector, especially in overvalued stocks, you may check out a stock's valuation attractiveness from Q score cut in less than a minute. So this reversal may not be enough reason to start taking longs in Infotech right now. Energy is the best performer of this week by far, went up by about 6%. The Syria conflict increased over this weekend. However, we didn't have to wait for that. Using Q systems, one could see telltale signs and buy ahead of the news. Energy stocks at buy point were identified using bottom up analysis and shared in our traders forum on Tuesday 10th April. We'll have a look at that posting soon. If we look at real estate, as a sector it went down. However, the stocks that we had identified earlier in previous market roundups for possible buy positions, we had looked at their technical strength, industry strength at that time. 
and fundamental strength. These stocks were APTS, IRT, PK and INN. All of them continue to do very well. Most outperforming the market. INN gave another buy opportunity on this Wednesday and it was a going flow trend following long trade setup. This may be taken as confirmation that when we choose stocks looking at all the possible factors then our trades are more robust even if the market declines little bit or the sector declines little bit our stocks are likely to do better and in this case the real estate sector decline most of these stocks actually went up went up quite nicely we'll have a look at these stocks let's look at the postings on the possible energy stocks long position from community forum and then look at this real estate stocks using technical charts. To check the posts in our traders forum, we can go to forum and then drill down or we can go to Q site for the postings in Q inside category. Under USA Q inside, I posted this topic bottom up analysis trend following suing long trade setups in multiple industries. Let's have a look at that post. It was posted four days ago, April 10th. And these are the steps that I followed to identify the potential trades. First I ran Q Global Sonar that is Q charts on Metastock to find the S&P 500 stocks that are inside the two boundary lines inside upper boundary and lower boundary lines these are the stocks that have further potential to go up because they are not over extended yet in either direction on the resulting list I ran Q backdrop bullish sonar to find the stocks that are bullish on the weekly chart so I found a number of stocks from steps 1 and 2 that are bullish in weekly and that are not overextended yet in the daily chart. On that short list I ran the go with flow sonar to find possible trend following long opportunities. Then starting from more than 500 stocks I ended up with a much shorter list. Instead of looking at the technical charts, I then looked at them using Q Vital to identify the stocks that are either optimally valued or have high growth. That means these stocks, the final stocks would be strong in terms of fundamental as well as technicals. Finally, I looked at Q Edge to find the stocks where industry is strong or where the industry is improving. When I completed all the steps, it took about 10-15 minutes. Starting from more than 500 stocks, I came to a handful of stocks where fundamentals, technicals and industry strengths were all aligned for the long direction. This was the result. I ran the analysis on Q Global and for ease of communicating, I displayed the sonar using Q Elite. These were the stocks that I found, 14 stocks. And if you look at the sector, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 of them were in energy sector, 3 in consumer cyclical and 3 in healthcare. When we have energy sector stocks dominating the long opportunities that we find then it is wiser to take long in the energy sector because remember we are always trying to buy into strength and short into weakness we discussed the same concept just now at a granular level over intraday time frame for day trade opportunities that we are going to now short dia and long iwm if we are looking for day trades 
The same concept applies to swing trades also. When most of the possible longs were in energy, it will be better to enter long in energy. I did a fundamental analysis using QVital where I entered the outcome of Q Global and then did a check on their valuation using the relative valuation column. We see that several of them are optimally valued and the others which are not optimally valued has nice earnings growth in recent quarters which we can see from the EPS YOY year over year quarterly growth for the past three quarters. So these were the stocks which had either optimal valuation or nice growth. If you see the energy stocks CHK, DVN, EOG, HAL, Halliburton, NFX, OKE, SLB, Slumberger, all of them are displaying nice growth in earnings. And finally I looked at the industries, the energy industries were starting to strengthen at that time. See, it was not cyan yet. All these energy industries were just starting to be cyan, which was showing up in the acceleration columns, the pace columns, the cyan color. Whereas the auto-related industries were bullish for a while more. Biotech was the industry that was still magenta. So probably we would stay away from biotech stocks based on that day's analysis. We could look for long opportunities in energy, possibly in automobile stocks. In the weekly market roundups, usually we carry out the top-down analysis starting from sector industry to stocks fundamentals to technicals. In this case, I did the reverse that is, I started from technical analysis and then looked up the stocks fundamentals and industry strength. That is my usual routine. During the weekends, I tend to do the top-down analysis. And during the weekdays, I put my stocks in QSonar, either in Elite or in Metastock. Look for tradable stocks with Q trade setups and then look at their fundamentals and industry strength. Different people may have different preferences, but that is my usual routine. We could identify the energy stock opportunities well before the Syrian conflict escalated. And there is a likelihood that those stocks will be going up next week. Some of them may already be profitable, Let's look at some of the charts. This is SLB. We can see the weekly candle is very bullish shape. Using Q charts, one could catch the very bottom, maybe at this point, when it tried to go below the watermark support level and reversed, creating a false downside breakout. There was high activity earlier. So there was possibility of exertion using that and using the strength of the industry and fundamental strength, one could take a long right on this candle. Else on this day, this week, that is Tuesday, Slumberger gave a possible go with flow long trade setup. For the next three days, it went up. Looking at the weekly and daily, it looks like it will be going up further, giving us a profitable swing trade. You may look at the other energy stocks. If they are already a bit far away from recent low, then we would not like to enter the long now. For example, this stock SLB is already somewhat high from the recent low which is at this level. So now we are not going to enter any long position. We are regular traders. We run our sonar regularly. So we will be able to catch the stock at the right point either using the go with flow trade setup this week or the false downside breakout one week ago. 
Now let's look at the real estate sector stocks that we identified earlier APTS, IRT, PK and INN. Real estate sector declined but our stocks did pretty well. APTS using at a glance chart in the weekly the memory support is holding the weekly candle color has changed from magenta to a series of yellows and now cyan for two successive weeks for APTS we discussed two possible techniques to enter long either let it go down create a false downside breakout and go up take a long right at the bottom or let it go above the memory resistance till down create a low and go up again so either take a going flow long trade after breakout or take a box long trade at the lower base none of that has happened it is holding on to its price level moving sideways the stock continues to be optimally valued so we may look for a suitable entry if the chart signal comes IRT another real estate long opportunity that we identified earlier it could be entered using the bullish headwind signal as a bullish headwind long trade or on the cyan candle as a go with flow long trade though the real estate sector decline this stock is continuing to go up we will not take any long trade at the right edge as we are regular traders we would catch the stock at either of these two positions or possibly on this sign candle as well this sign candle was the second go with flow long trade opportunity in this stock pk this is another stock that we had analyzed the weekly candle shape is very bullish now it closed above all the four direction lines cyan magenta yellow and white it is bit far from the recent low so we will not take any long trade right now we may wait for it to till down little bit and then go up again giving us a go with flow long trade setup though the sector decline this stock is certainly bullish the last real estate stock that we had discussed earlier is INN in which it changed color from magenta to yellow one week it changed to magenta again and then it is cyan for three successive weeks in daily chart it created a double bottom and our first trade opportunity came on this cyan color candle this Wednesday that was a go with flow long trade opportunity by that time weekly candle color was already cyan that is bullish we had a higher high and higher low so we could take a long trade right at the close of this day put stop just below recent low and book partial profit at upper boundary that initial profit target has already been reached though the sector declined the stocks that we identified did well and i think why it did well is because we identified the stocks not only based on technical charts but also based on fundamentals and industry strength at that time they were paying nice dividends as well from sector analysis we now move to industry analysis last week five of the best accelerating industries were in energy sector we always keep an eye on accelerating industries because they tend to be best performer in subsequent weeks this week seven of the best performers are in energy and four of them had accelerated one week ago therefore looking at the acceleration of these four industries we could look for long positions one week earlier itself and this week they became best performer so the stocks might have made nice profit using q acceleration and 360 degrees analysis you could confidently buy energy stocks well ahead of others out of these seven industries 
we can see oil and gas drilling energy equipment services oil and gas equipment services and coal and consumable fuels they were in the list of accelerating industries one week ago they became best performers and in addition three more energy industries came in this best performance list oil and gas refining and marketing oil and gas exploration and production and oil and gas and consumable fuels some of these industries were strong for a while whereas oil and gas storage and transportation is one of the weaker industries in energy sector we can find that out instantly from QH or industry scorecard as this industry turned around accelerating and then becoming one of the best performers Telgrass Energy TGP went up after displaying a bullish headwind at the very bottom showing once again why Q traders take the headwind reversal signal seriously and avoid trading against it let's look at QH identify this industry oil and gas storage and transportation see how it was lagging earlier and now getting better still one of the weaker in energy sector but it got better and when it got better the stock TEGP went up after displaying bullish at let's have a look at this using top-down analysis this is QH every time we open QH it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods let's look at the sector panel for each of the review periods it assigns a low score of 1 to the worst performer high score to the best performer and also applies a color gradient magenta to the worst one cyan to the best one the result is a scorecard and heat map table that can instantly tell us which industry or sector is strong now so energy as a sector is strongest now with the best possible score of 11 for both long term investment entry as well as swing trade entry decisions we tend to look at the 5 days period that is our primary period energy sector is now strong over multiple recent periods infotech was strong earlier declined sharply in recent times dipping to the worst possible score of 1 and now improved whether this improvement leads to further uptrend or this is just a temporary recovery is to be seen there are probably not many stocks in infotech at optimal buy point right now in last couple of weeks utilities and real estate did better prior to that they were very bearish in the middle they strengthened and now they declined again we just saw that though real estate as a sector declined our stocks identified using 360 degrees analysis continue to do well if we drill down to the energy sector by clicking this button and go to the industry tab all the energy sector industries are displayed in the industry tab now we can look over the five days period to get the strongest industries we can sort over five days column the strongest ones come with the biggest scores and the weakest ones come with the smallest scores oil and gas storage and transportation is one of the weakest and we can know that instantly from the heat map color transition it was weak for long time only recently it is starting to become strong so if we are looking for buy opportunities here probably those will be stocks that are optimally valued they are unlikely to be high growth stocks we can use Q scorecard to look at the stocks of this industry oil and gas storage and transportation 
in Q scorecard we can search for stocks belonging to a particular industry these are all the stocks and we can sort them over relative valuation column largest to smallest the best valued stocks will come to the top I looked at this stock TEGP it has very nice valuation optimal valuation shown by cyan color both for relative valuation column and internal valuation column in addition I noticed that it is having improved earnings growth in recent quarters past three quarterly results are showing nice year over year earnings growth and even EPS growth over one year and two year periods are also positive bright green that attracted my attention and I looked up the chart TEGP from QA we saw that this industry was languishing so we would expect stocks to drop as well TEGP dropped heavily then this week it reversed tried to take out the low of the prior week and reversed with extreme high activity in the weekly chart around the same time there was a bullish headwind sign in the daily on this daily chart there was extreme high activity after a long period of muted activity looking at that one might be starting to look for long entry opportunities this candle would not be the best day to take a long position because after gap up open it declined a possible long opportunity came on this cyan color candle and then again this week on Tuesday on the second cyan color candle at minimum looking at the bullish headwind signal one would tighten stop in any existing short position and thereby protect profit and improve equity at the right edge we would not like to take any long trade in this stock because it is very close to the declining yellow direction line and the stop would also be reasonably far away would we like to take a long trade in this stock if we were going to take a long in any energy sector stock let's look at key edge this industry is strengthening but it is not the strongest one in energy sector we want to buy in the strongest industry buy into the stocks with best fundamentals and technical charts not in the weakest one so if we are looking for long position it would be better to look for long position in oil and gas drilling energy and equipment services etc not oil and gas storage and transportation I took that example more as an example of how to use bullish headwind signal to protect profit in short position one might look for long trades in this industry as well however given a stock in oil and gas drilling and a stock in oil and gas storage and transportation it makes sense to take the long position in the oil and gas drilling industry because that is stronger in the last market roundup in oil and gas drilling industry we identified this stock UNT unit cop as a potential buy remember we discussed in the last market roundup and this week it went up very nicely by more than 13 percent and the second best performing industry of this week oil and gas exploration and production here I found a stock Murphy oil MUR this displayed a bullish headwind and then went up from there these three stocks UNT Murphy and TEGP all were and still are optimally valued TEGP and Murphy have sizable recent quarter earnings growth as well we saw TEGP just now it not only has recent quarterly earnings growth but even last few years earnings growth is positive Murphy is also showing nice earnings growth and all these three stocks could be identified using Q top down or bottom up analysis
let's look at Murphy fundamentals and charts because we know the stock ticker we can simply filter by that Murphy this is in one of the best performing industries of this week in the strongest sector energy sector relative valuation is in cyan color so optimal valuation and we can see improving earnings over last three quarters this is the kind of stock that we would like to buy which is in a sector that is strong in an industry that is strong fundamentally it is strong and let's see how much it went up this week it went up by more than 8% this week let's look at Murphy's technical charts Murphy displayed a bullish headwind in the daily chart sometime in the end of February since then it pretty much held the base this memory support was also providing support and the watermark levels were also providing support it moved sideways for a while then broke out of the narrow range and moved up right now it is above upper boundary so we are not going to take any long trade right now weekly candle shape and color are clearly bullish if it now comes down little bit and goes up again it will give a nice go with flow long trade setup we may wait for that let's look at UNT the stock that we discussed in last market roundup in the last market roundup I had discussed the bullishness based on these two very bullish shape candles both of them also created false downside breakouts of the memory support lines this week had very high activity in daily it came to the watermark level and reverse from there there was a bullish headwind at this level as well one could take a long trade either at this sign candle or even better at the second sign candle that came this week on Tuesday this Tuesday sign candle closed above all the four direction lines one could take a long at that time could stop near recent low using upper boundary as the initial profit target it is likely that the profit target will be hit next week we could again identify this trade using 360 degrees analysis and take it with very low risk this is a snapshot of last week's accelerating industries showing that five of the energy industries were accelerating last week so we could get ready to enter long trade in energy one week ago worst performing industries seven of the worst performers are in consumer discretionary you may be cautious about long positions in this sector in general we'll use QH to see that out of these seven six have been weak for quite a while the other department stores weakened recently in the sector edge panel we can see that consumer discretionary which had been strong in recent months with a score of 10 and 11 the best possible scores now it is gradually turning magenta over past five days it is actually having a score of one magenta color so consumer discretion as a sector decelerated the most over five days and again over one day period to look at consumer discretionary industries we can click on the drill down button and look at the consumer discretionary industries we can sort by five days smallest to largest the weakest ones come to the top we can see many of the worst performers of all the 270 plus industries are in consumer discretionary sector scores 1 2 3 5 6 7 8 14 16 19 20 remember the bold case represents top or bottom 20 percent of the scores and we have found 13 here many of them were weak for a while household durable cable satellite household specialties they were weak for a while home furnishing was 
also weak for long time home building weekend for several months now and department stores is the one that we can recently we can identify that immediately from the heat map so the best opportunities to short in household durable cable satellite houseware and specialties have probably passed if we are looking for shorts then we may look for department stores or if we are having long positions in department stores we may be cautious home building is one of the worst performer in this way however it was weak earlier also home building appeared in the decelerating industries list in the roundup of 31st march however even before that in the roundup of 27th jan we had seen that toll brothers t o l m h o l e n n v r all dropped after displaying bearish headwind around the same time these stocks might have dropped already we first discussed them on 27th jan or possibly even before that those were the best times to short looking back it is amazing how the bearish headwind can catch the top let's look at some of these stocks t o l m h o toll brothers using at a glance chart it displayed bearish headwind in weekly as well as daily at the very top then it dropped heavily at this point it displayed a bullish headwind so short position holders should be careful and it successfully went up to value area and declined again looking at the right edge it is moving up down up down with a bearish memory resistance line there is no memory support line at the bottom at the right edge it dropped below the white direction line however it is zigzagging around the white direction line the weekly candle shape of previous week was very indecisive this week color is neutral shape is bearish overall there is no short trade opportunity or long trade opportunity right now the best short opportunities had come long time ago let's look at another home building stock mho mho also displayed bearish headwind at the very top at that point in the weekly chart it completed a false upside breakout the best time to short or to protect profit in long position was at that time then it dropped a bullish headwind had come on this candle since then price gradually went up at the right edge of the chart mho has created higher high and higher low in the daily chart weekly candle color is cyan bullish shape is mixed next week if it goes up in the daily chart gives a cyan color candle then technically it will give a long opportunity if the industry is strengthening at that time then one may look for a long position in mho at that time let's look at mho's fundamentals mho is not optimally valued relative valuation is pretty weak it has uh, earnings growth in recent quarters so that will allow us to take a long trade if the industry and the technical setup are there in terms of industry home building is weak now so we are not going to take any long trade next week if home building starts to go up we can see that in real time from the pace columns and also from the recent periods performance one day and two day performance i can see over one day it is displaying acceleration so after the recent weakness it is possible that next week it will go up if home building starts to go up next week then we have identified a stock where we can take a long position mho that is how we combine the technicals fundamentals and the industry strength score as well as the acceleration together to anticipate trades and be ready mho is not a stock where we would like to take a short trade 
if industry goes up that will give us a possible long trade opportunity the two worst performers of this week home furnishing retail and department stores they were in fact in the decelerating list one week ago this is the list of decelerating industries of previous week and we can see home furnishing retail and department stores were two of the worst decelerating industries one week ago this again shows that decelerating industries often turn out to be the worst performers and we are able to anticipate and take trades using Q setups of course well ahead of others in department stores Kohl's has an attractive valuation however its earnings growth is slowing down the stock hasn't moved up in last three months moving sideways and now looks like it is toppling over in both weekly and daily if you have a long position in cases you may be careful and look for potential short opportunities let's look at QH to look at department stores industry department stores this industry was strong earlier so we expect stocks to be at a high level near or at pendulum high and then it weakened rapidly over five days and holding on to the weakness over two days and one day period so this is an industry where we'll be careful about holding long positions because it was up so the best buy setups had already passed now it may be time to book profit or apply trailing stop or even look for shorts let's look at kss fundamentals first calls it has nice valuation optimal valuation on friday it dropped by 2.7 percent it's not far from 52 week high so this may give us a short opportunity at the very top let's look at the chart calls using at a glance template for many months now it is practically going sideways the last memory uptrend line was broken by this candle since then it is moving sideways this week it has a bearish shape and color candle in daily chart it had a watermark resistance level on this candle price tried to go there and reversed this was an earnings period but price couldn't go up or didn't go down also on friday it dipped below the yellow direction line if anybody is holding long position it may be wiser to put a trailing stop or maybe book profit and one may look for potential shorts that will give us shorting opportunity at the very top there is no trade opportunity right now using the q standard trade setups if it gives us a magenta color candle or preferably goes up little bit and comes down with a magenta color candle that will give us a low risk short opportunity weekly has turned magenta for many weeks now so that will allow us to take the go with flow short trade setup this is how we can use the top down analysis to anticipate trades and be ready for that we can keep kss in our short list and take the trade only when the technical setup comes accelerating industries tend to be best performer in subsequent weeks we saw that in case of energy industries many energy industries accelerated in the previous week and they are best performers this week this week we see multiple semiconductor industries in the accelerating list three of them so we will stay away from shorting semiconductors right now nvidia will not stop it precisely refers from weekly memory support similar to what we saw in us oil looking at the memory support in us oil one week ago i had mentioned that the likely move from there would be upward similar comment could be made on nvidia as well 
it went up by 8% reversing from the memory support. That is why we stay away from taking shots when memory support is nearby. AMBA, we had discussed this talk earlier, it gave multiple short opportunities earlier. Now it completed a false downside reversal and gave a box long trade setup in daily chart on 10th April. This way, it went up by more than 70% this week. It reversed from watermark support where bullish headwind had appeared earlier. Let's look at these two stocks, NVIDIA and Umbrella using technical charts. NVIDIA using at a glance template. In weekly chart, there were a series of bearish headwind signals. Looking at that, in spite of previous strength, a long position holder would be cautious and protect profit, maybe book some profit. One week ago, it was precisely at the memory support. And we keep on seeing when price comes to memory support, looks very bearish in terms of shape, color one week ago. But the likely move from there is usually upward. We saw that in US oil and we see in Nvidia also. It went up strongly this week, reverse precisely from the memory support. In the daily chart, earlier there were multiple false upside breakouts one could try to take very low risk short opportunities at that point. At the right edge, it is near value area in the daily chart. If it tilts down, it will give us lower high, lower low. However, the weekly cyan color bullish, so we will not have any go with flow short trade opportunity right now. In the daily, it is also between support and resistance memories inside a triangle pattern. So we will stay away from taking any short or long trade in the middle of the triangle pattern. Instead, if it goes to the upper watermark support tilts down or lower watermark support and tilts up. We will try to take box short at the top or box long at the bottom. The other semiconductor stock that went up nicely is umbrella or umbrella A M B A. In the weekly this week it has displayed a bullish headwind signal and on this day one two three four this Tuesday it completed a false downside breakout near a level where bullish headwinds had come earlier and there were heavy activities at those levels pointing to bulls coming in. So when price came and completed a false downside breakout with a bull release signal on this yellow candle one could take a long right at the close putting stop just below recent low very narrow stop loss that is a constant in all our swing trade setups and book profit either after the risk distance is covered or when price comes to value area. So initial profit could be already booked. The weekly is very bullish shape and color both. However, daily has a memory resistance line. Still one could book partial profit and leave the rest with trailing stop. Where is trailing stop right now? Let's check it out. This is a MBA using hop off template that shows us the stop loss levels. We could take a long right at this point, put stop loss at this price level. Using the Q protection signal, this was our risk amount. When price came to the yellow direction line, more than the risk distance was covered. Now the Q protection signal is pointing to this price level. So we could hold partial position with stop loss at around this level. Even if price reverses and hit the stop loss, we will have significant profit in the existing position and partial position has already been booked with good profit. This is a way we try to book profit and then let profit run. The industry is strong, the weekly is also very strong, so we would not like to book 
enter profit in such a trade. The box trade setup and bound trade setup allows us to take long or short at the extremes with very narrow stop loss. And they often tend to be very profitable as well as in this case as well. We could see earlier how using false upside breakout we could take very profitable short trades and now we see using false downside breakout we could take very profitable long trades. In this way a swing trader can profit from trading in both directions in the same stock however that does require a certain amount of mental flexibility. Another thing I have noticed if we are investing long term in the same stock and holding a long position in AMBA then it becomes difficult to also short it at the same time. In fact in the same account it is not possible that we liquidate the long term long holding. So what I tend to do I tend to avoid taking long term long and then short term short in the same stock. My long term holdings are in separate stocks and I don't try to take short in them at the same time. For me psychologically it becomes difficult. For swing trading I have a list of stocks and I am quite flexible to take long and short both in those stocks. Using Q360 degree analysis I have more confidence because I always align fundamental industry as well as technical strength or weakness with my trades. Decelerating industries of this week from the worst performers we saw consumer discretionary industries were dominating. The same is true in the decelerating industries list. Six of the decelerating industries are from consumer discretionary. This further shows the widespread weakness in this sector. These are restaurants, home building, it has weakened again. However, we just saw that the best place for shorting in home building has already passed. So we are not going to look for shorts in home building right now. However, retail stocks like footwear, textiles, multi-line retail, apparel retailers, they were strengthening and now they weaken. Let's look at QH to reconfirm that. In QH to look at the decelerating industries we can sort over paste five days column smallest to largest. The decelerating industries come to the top. We can see footwear, textile, apparel, apparel retail, multi-line retail, computer electronics retail. Multiple retail industries are coming to the top and all of them were cyan earlier. So here we would expect stocks to be at or near pendulum high level. They decelerated over five days and several of them, especially apparel retail and multi-line retail, they are holding on to their weakness magenta throughout from five days to two days to one day. We may be careful about holding long stocks in these industries. The heat map instantly tells us even for long term investment when is the time to be cautious. Apparel retail stocks had given nice profit because it was strong for long time. Now it rapidly declined in score and became magenta. So it may be time to book partial or full profit. I found these stocks GCO, CATO, CATO, CATO and BKE in apparel retail. They are all medium valued and slowing earnings growth. The stocks are at relatively high level. So if we had long stocks they are in good profit. Looking at the weakness in the industry and the slowing earnings growth, it may be better to be cautious in these stocks. Let's look at these stocks using fundamentals and then using technical charts. GCO, CATO, BKE. 
these are the apparel retail stocks from Q scorecard we can sort using relative valuation smallest to largest based on valuation the weakest stocks come to the top CATO GCO and BK all of them have yellow color in relative valuation so they are medium valued and all of them has slowing earnings growth not CATO so much CATO has increasing earnings growth but I see GCO and BKE also has increasing earnings growth okay so only GCO has slowing earnings growth not CATO or BKE that was wrongly typed in the slide let's look at three these three charts CATO GCO BKE CATO has gone up considerably from the low after creating a false downside breakout accompanied by extreme high activity and now it is at a double top in the weekly chart this week's candle shape is indecisive in the daily it has displayed a bearish headwind signal price it above upper boundary that is why it may be better to protect profit in existing long position the industry is also weakening fundamentals are still all right bke the second retail stock fundamentals are still okay medium halute earnings increased in recent most quarter however in the weekly it is at memory resistance has two successive weeks of indecisive shape candle in fact this week's candle shape is bearish reversed after creating a false upside breakout price closed below the memory resistance in weekly in daily it created false upside breakout at watermark resistance level and daily has displayed bearish headwind signal after going up from this low price level for many months it is moving sideways now the industry is weakening and there are some bearish signals in daily the headwind bearish signal and in weekly in terms of successive candles with upper tails so it may be better to protect profit in existing long position and avoid taking new longs in BK right now fundamentals are still okay however technicals are not that strong the last stock was GCO GCO also rallied from the bottom just after displaying multiple bullish headwind signals in the weekly chart those could catch the very bottom now it came to very long term memory resistance line and has displayed very headwind in the weekly chart completed a false upside breakout at this watermark level in daily it completed a false upside breakout as well there is a memory support line if somebody took a long at this price level they have significant profit in the daily if the memory support is broken they may be careful the long term holders may also be careful this is a stock where earnings growth is slowing down earnings growth turned negative in the last quarter industry is weak and technicals are also showing weakness not a stock to take long long position holders may be careful let's summarize the market based on market breadth analysis as well as market ETFs analysis continues to be indecisive not as indecisive as was in the previous two weeks but still indecisive there is no swing trade opportunity in any of the ETFs when we drill down to sectors and industries we see one sector is very strong energy it had been strong for a while and continuing to be strong last week we saw many of the energy industries accelerating that turned them into the best performers of this week using the acceleration and then drilling down 
to fundamentals and technicals we could take profitable long trades at that time over this weekend multiple countries participated against syria and it is possible that oil price will go up further next week however before buying energy stocks right now we need to see that they are still at a low risk level the best opportunities might have passed we saw several energy stocks that went up by 7% 8% more than 10% already using key systems we could catch them earlier without waiting for this news to come out there are not many other sectors or industries that are going up forcefully there are several where we may be cautious in fact consumer discretionary sector is weakening heavily we saw that from worst performers as well as decelerating industries many of them majority of them are in consumer discretionary some consumer discretionary industries were already weak for long time so probably we are not holding any long position in them and the best short opportunities had long passed however several consumer discretionary industries like the retail industries apparel retail etc they were strong in recent times now weakening if we are holding long stocks in them we may be cautious and look for potential short opportunities that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably